Hi, everybody, and welcome. I'm Dr. Diane Ginsberg. I am a medical doctor and MD. I'm board certified in obstetrics and gynecology and also anti-aging and regenerative medicine. I have practiced uh, obstetrics and gynecology for about 35 years and over the last about 10 years started to integrate more of anti-aging, regenerative medicine, menopause management, and overall longevity in my practice. And what I'd like to talk to you today is about um, young plasma and how it helps facial and skin rejuvenation. We, as uh, we age, want to be healthy inside and out. So there's a lot of things we can do for both sides. Today, again, I'd like to talk to you and I'm gonna screen share about what Young Plasma can do for facial health. Um, it, it creates a increase in blood flow above and beyond what PRP can do. And I know a lot of everybody watching this has, is familiar with PRP or platelet-rich plasma, might even be using it in their practice or, or have patients, or if you are a patient, might have had PRP before. And the concept behind it is that our system ages. And as our system ages, our blood cells and uh, the, the young proteins in our body start to age. So the ability to rejuvenate what we would like starts to fail. A very good example of that is actually menopause in women. As estrogen drops and we move into menopause, inflammation increases, what's called insulin resistance, the ability to manipulate glucose into your muscles to decrease the extra glucose floating around, that creates more inflammation. Um, number three, what will happen is, is that your gut microbiome, the, the gut bugs that live in inside you, when estrogen drops, become less diverse. They leave. So all of those things together create a loss in the efficiency of the system. What we would like to do is understand that better and bring back what we can to help our skin glow, our body be strong. I know a lot of us take different supplements, but what can we do as the blood supply to our skin decreases and the elasticity of the tissue decreases? What can we do to bring those vessels back as much as possible? Bring those growth factors back as much as possible to create cellular function, because that's what it's all about. The more efficient your system can be, the better each individual cell will be and combined together, the better your whole body will be. So what happens with skin aging? Ultraviolet radiation from the sun we know is recommended, is sorry, is recognized as the primary environmental factor. So it the ultraviolet rays create an inflammatory effect on our skin and that creates a breakdown of what we call dermal collagen. So dermis is skin. Collagen are the proteins, particles, or peptides that are inside the skin that actually form together to make the skin look young and healthy. They create the elasticity. They, they create the youthful grow, glow. And you can even see in color. They blood vessels, they create blood vessels because you can see the cheeks in this patient have a little bit more of a youthful glow. And you notice here, not only is the skin not as plump, but the blood vascularity isn't there. So the system needs to be supported. Now, as I mentioned, when estrogen drops, especially in women, what will start to happen is that the repair of the skin doesn't happen as well. So estrogen deficiency is detrimental to all wound healing processes. But it, the biggest reason for that is because estrogen itself maintains vascularity in the blood vessels. There are estrogen receptors in the lining of your blood vessels. So when you start to drop your estrogen levels, those blood vessels don't work as efficiently anymore. So the combination of the inflammation that raises in the system, the lack of the vascularity, the inability for the body to make those growth factors anymore, and we start to see that the skin doesn't glow like it used to. It doesn't repair like it used to. It doesn't have the elasticity like it used to. 
So what do we do? Well, the theory behind PRP or platelet-rich plasma was that platelets themselves contain, say, healing particles, right? Growth factors, proteins, inflammatory messengers, they contain particles that when condensed and released into an area, they will heal what is broken. The problem with this theory from an aging rejuvenation standpoint is that you can put proteins in from your platelets, but if you don't have the scaffolding for them to do something with the younger growth factors and, and the nutrients and the exosomes, if you don't have all of that in there, then what's going to happen is you, you can't heal. So the hope or the theory is that the growth factors released when the platelets are spun down and injected will create a positive effect. But you can't, again, use just a piece of something to rebuild a whole picture. So what happens when you used aged PRP, right? You take an older person who has older plasma and much less growth factors, you spin those platelets out and what happens? Data indicates that cell growth and division of old cells in vascular smooth muscle in the blood cells are desensitized to stimulation by platelet-derived platelet growth factor. So therefore, if you put PRP into an older skin environment, which we call the exposome, right? What's here? So you inject the factors, but the problem is everything else is here that is bathing the cells aren't going to react to it. So what is around each individual cell and, and what's flowing through those blood vessels in entirety? Not just some leftover pieces from a broken platelet, but in the entirety of this system will actually make a big difference in how the damage is repaired, how the system is fixed. And it's, it's kind of like in your own body. If you get hurt and your vitamin D is low and you don't have enough omega-3 and your gut microbiome is a problem, you haven't taken your probiotics and your diet is too low in nutrients, the system can't rebuild itself. But if you feed the correct nutrients, the system can do more. It's the same concept here. You can't put a growth factor from a broken piece of platelet, I don't care how concentrated it is, into the system and expect this age system, which is surrounded by everything else that is older, to react to it. Now, how do we know that's a problem? Because here's what was looked at. So the medical literature said, Less optimal and usable, less optimal usable proteins begin to circulate through the bloodstream as we get older. So you can see proteins associated with cardiovascular disease, with Alzheimer's disease, poor proteins, misfolded proteins, less efficient proteins circulate as we get older. So here's your 34 age group. And then here's as you get into 60 and then mid late 70s. So the amount of less efficient proteins are there. So that goes back to what we called our exposome. The proteins that you need to utilize to build your skin back are not what they used to be. So they will not respond to just these factors that may still be present to whatever small level in the platelets that are older. Problem number two is that platelet-derived growth factor, so that what you're going to use in your platelets decreases with aging. So if you are in your 40s, 50s, and 60s, and you use the PRP in your system, the volume of what's in there is nothing compared to what happens in somebody that's significantly younger. We use 18 to 25, but you can see the big drop once you get into those older ages. So what is young plasma and why is it so wonderful for basically everything? But let's focus on skin healing today. Okay, blood vessel cells from the brain, liver and fat accelerated, illustrated an accelerated aging cell type. 
suggesting continuous and direct exposure to the aging circulatory system induces strong negative changes. So circulating milieu, all those cells in there, as they get older, create negative sense of being. Cells that line our blood vessels are very susceptible to the growth factors that are actually in the blood. So the side of the blood vessels, what's forming the blood vessel itself and how strong and, and, and healthy it will be to bring the healthy system um, cells and growth cells into the, the all parts of our body, especially the skin, will benefit significantly when the youthful factors are injected into the, their surroundings. So young plasma reverses aspects of aging, especially in the capillaries. So when young plasma is placed on, a, on your face after you have microneedled it, in other words, the space has opened up, rather than putting in just those old platelet factors, you're putting in all of these young factors. And those factors are going to make their way into the capillaries. They drop slowly. If you think of each of the capillaries, capillaries have small openings in them. They're, they're actually not as solid as you would think. They have little micro openings for these factors to drip in and revitalize them. Young plasma contains small unit that we're using 37.4 billion exosomes, plus all the proteins, the young growth factors, the positive byproducts of a young microbiome, the positive byproducts of all the healthy hormones. What we notice as we age is what? Microbiome, gut bugs, diversity decrease. So those metabolites aren't as efficient. They can't be positive for the body as much. Joint and cartilage repair growth factors go down. Brain growth factors go down. PRP from young individuals is superior to that from elderly individuals because of the higher concentration of platelets and increased production of growth factors. So even when they did stem cell studies and they took stem cells and they grew them in young plasma and they grew stem cells, even of older people in their own old plasma and in young plasma, the stem cells from the older people grew better in the young plasma. So it's, a, it's the exposure of your system to everything surrounding it. Why? Because young plasma will upregulate mitochondrial function. Mitochondria make energy, powerhouse of the cell. They make your energy. You need energy or ATP, as we call it in the medical community, to generate more blood vessels, more blood cells, more healthy elastic fibers, more healthy um, uh, uh, spaces or cells that are in the space between the dermis and the epidermis. So all the fibroblasts and melanocytes and a little bit of even fat cells in there. The reason we start to look older is because the dermis, which is the deep layer of the skin and the epidermis, which is the higher layer, all those multiple cells in between, they just don't get made anymore. The mitochondria will run out of energy. The cells just don't get produced. So now it's like putting two pieces of tissue paper on top of each other. That's why as women get older or men get older, they'll say, oh, I barely hit something and I bruise and I have a big black and blue mark. That's because there's that, that spongy layer isn't there. Well, that's what makes your face look young. That's what makes your skin look young and healthy. So not only is it a nice spongy layer, but it's actually feeding the tissues in, in all those layers to keep them functioning. So nearly all cell types are amenable to reformation via changes in blood composition, even those not directly exposed to blood. Again, because if you fix the mitochondria, you fix the energy, you create benefit in the whole system. Here was a big global study that they did on uh, animals and on mice. And what they found is that when they infused young plasma into old mice, they saw the capillaries get younger. They saw rejuvenation. So again, as you put that on your face and you put all the young factors in, where I think people get really confused is they think PRP is more than it is. It's signaling growth factors 
a small percentage of the big picture of what you need for your body. So, so the big kind of concept behind this is that if we want to fix everything, we have to support everything. You, you, you can't, like if you're going to go out, you, you, you can't just put on a shirt. You need shirt and pants and shoes and socks and, and you got to comb your hair. It's a little bit of everything to put that look together. The baseline again of aging is deficient blood flow. And therefore, that's you're not going to have your nutrients. You're not going to have your antioxidants. You're not going to bring your, your healthy new repair factor in. So the more we encourage blood flow, the better our skin will look and glow. And that's what helps prevent premature aging and that young look. So although we can't completely turn back time, we're working on it slowly one second uh, each day. So I hope this helped explain a little um, whether, again, you are a practitioner or a patient. I hope this gave a little bit of background as far as the understanding of the benefits of what plasma from somebody between 18 and, and 25, just the youthful factors that start to fall off the minute we get into our late 20s and early 30s, and, and why taking a little bit of older factors and injecting it or, or um, placing it on top of the microneedling or even injecting it, IV anything, you're going to grow the system way better, way better when you put all the growth factors back together. So I hope this answers questions and uh, stay young. <laughs>